his wife died. Anne died. And yeah, uh, like Anne that. is now contacting Good him. Friend. And uh-huh. she's still writing books with him. And oh, that's yeah. now that wow. she's dead. Right. And it's wow. not writing books about Whitley's experiences. And so Whitley Shriver was saying, and I've had this happen too, that there's a crossover, that the dead um, sometimes go on board ships. Um, the, sometimes the contact the experiencers will see the dead, the, their deceased mm-hmm. relatives, in their UFO yep. encounters. So what do you know mm-hmm. about that? It seems to be a, a, a huge connection between the living dead, extraterrestrials, and the, the paranormal. What, what are your thoughts on that? Let's go round table on that one. What do you guys think about it? Go ahead, Valerie. You go first. Well, I, I actually have to say I don't know enough about it to really comment on it. Um, I, I have heard of the experience, and I believe it does happen, but um, I have—I don't know enough about it to really comment on it. Okay, that's fine. That's a good answer. Mm-hmm. Jamie, what do you know about the connection between uh, extraterrestrials experiencers and the, the dead? Anything? Yeah, I... I, very little from my end as well. I mean, I've seen those as uh, a lot of a lot of stuff I've looked at. I've seen those as separate, uh, but um, I do, you know, I do believe that some of the extraterrestrial encounters are or can be from other dimensions, um, and we quite don't understand what that means really at this point. At least I don't. Um, and those other dimensions could be where, you know, um, those who have passed may may reside as well. So. I believe, and Paul, you know, has covered this before where he talks about sometimes, you know, um, ghosts are mistaken for ETs and vice versa. So uh, I think there is a connection. I just, I, I, I haven't seen enough research to, to talk about it. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll pass. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> well, I, I think this just talks to how, to how much depth there is to the field, all the different fields, that there is so much to know and learn. And um, and uh, and that's again, that's another reason why I did the want to do the convention is that so we can learn, we can find out what's going on there, talk about people talking about their experiences, sharing it with others, networking, um, and 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 talking about all the different types of experiences that you know not everyone has has them. Um, you could be an experiencer, but you can have different types of experiences so it's i think it's a good if it, i think it'd be a great place to just kind of learn from other people and say oh wow i didn't know about that or gee oh hey that did happen to me and i didn't know what it was um so that's that's another reason why i i was uh invested in this convention is that people can can learn from each other and grow and and if you and and invest more time in learning about the part of the paranormal or UFOs or whatever. If you have a significant interest in something, you can learn more about it. Well, Valerie, so did you have any problem with okay. the X Files Unlimited? Because you're getting the guy from X Files, and you know, with X Files in your name, did you have to get permission from anybody with the television show or X Files or? You know, get, no. because that's a great name. They know that that's yeah. a brand, right, for the TV show. Yeah. Well, it's just a fan-led one. I didn't. I don't think I had to get any permission. Maybe that was something. I don't believe so. It's fan-led. It's um, a lot of people use. You know, use. You know, X files different types like, of things like Xerox and it's not or X- for IBM yeah. or something like that, right? X like yeah. a. Copy. Yeah. We say, yeah. you say X Files yeah. because of the TV show. We all know we're all fans. I'm definitely a fan. Right. But I just wanted right. to know if you had trouble because they have a brand, they have an X Files wiki. You know, they have an X File. But that's something yeah. that if you're going to be doing this, X Filers Unlimited is the name of your domain. So that's your brand. So that's your name, your yeah. domain. Jamie, yeah, go and, ahead. And it's very different from the X Files. I mean, there's, there's no way you can say it's the same thing. So. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think that's that well. problem. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, gonna, it's gonna, very gonna... different. Yeah, I can't use anything from the X Files per se, like Fox from the Fox Station, or I can't use their their photographs. I can't use their um, 
you know, whatever they have, whatever media they have. I can't do that. I could never do that um, because that would not be, I could, that would be illegal <laughs> or I would get in trouble. Um, but X-Files United is very different. It's, it's, it's not, it's, it's not anywhere near X-Files. So you can't confuse the two. So it just, it's just kind of like similar, but it's not the same. Well, X-Files. So, uh, yeah, let's maybe there's a uh, did you look it up the definition or anything or but that's just fun. We all know what X-Files is. So you've got X-Filers Unlimited and okay. really this well, is exciting cuz like you said it's a lot of paranormal research and it can be yeah. you know a lot yeah. of people think it's just ghost hunting but it's not. You know, it's not just psychics and mediums and and ghosts. Yeah. It's UFOs and cryptid yeah. researchers and yeah. authors. It's all kind yeah. of stuff with X-Filers. Go ahead. Right. Well, and uh, there's a convention, I believe it's in May, it's uh, called X-Fest. Um, so, you know, that's taken from the X-Files. Um, so it's similar, but not the same. Um, and and there's X-Files News. I mean, now that's different. That's, they, they, um, they're mostly on Twitter and they update, on Facebook, they update people on information regarding the TV show X-Files. So that's different. Um, so, and, and we're just not, you know, we're, yeah. So, I mean, there's similar things that go on or similar names for different things, but we're all different. We, we all have a different um, agenda is what I'm trying to say, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, they got a, in Houston where I, they have events there, but in Pearland where I used to live uh, when my kids were little, I was Pearland PD and worked there. Uh, I don't know if I want people knowing that now, <laughs> but anyway, where I was going with this, they have an ex- excess event center. <laughs> I said excess, so yeah, because you said the word excess, and I thought of excess event center, you know, in Pearland, you know. So anyway, mm. so yeah, so yeah. X, and uh, well, I'm just excited because I love X Files, and I and being a paranormal researcher, a UFO ET contactee, and writing all kind of books, and I wrote uh, 2012 and Beyond, and uh, Jamie wrote Beyond 2012. Is that a coincidence? Wow. Do, folks. Wow. wow. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, you know what they say, there's no such thing as coincidences. I guess you two are fated to meet. <laughs> I guess so. That's it. 2012 <laughs> and Beyond, folks. So uh, that's your host, Teresa J. Morris. I got me a plug in there, didn't I? <laughs> You did, you did. So Jamie has folks beyond 2012, and TJ Morris has 2012 and beyond. So, you know, awesome. And I wrote uh, Cosmology, uh, Knowing Cosmology, and Janet and I are working on our new book. So let me let a, get a plug, get plug in. We don't know what we're going to call it, but we're working on Portal Stargate because we had she had Stargate to the Cosmos in 2018, and we have people wanting to work with us as agents, consultants, and organizers, and we've been using ACO Association for Alien Contact Org and ACO for Ascension Center Org, and we're sort of bringing, bringing them all together, but you guys just look us up on Facebook, but I'm excited about maybe somehow getting and helping you in the future, so I hope you have some more of these, because we love to promote, and that's how Janet and I got started from 27 to when 2012, when we began this T.J. Mars ET radio, and so uh, you didn't even know you were going to be on an ET radio, did you, Valerie? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I had no idea. I had no idea that when Jamie reached out and started, you know, networking and stuff, that we would actually be, or I, we would actually be on radio shows. <laughs> I really? had. Yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't. Didn't even think of the possibility. So I didn't think anyone would really be interested at first. <laughs> so that's, oh, that's my exciting goodness. too. Girl. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Janet, Janet, did you find Jamie or did Jamie find you? Let's get the scoop now, oh, folks. Well, I'm, I'm not sure how we found each other. Uh, we're running out of time. I had a couple questions before we, we end up, uh, you know, the show ends. I want to know more about the – Go ahead. Right. Paranormal researchers. I wanted to know folks. more about. I wanted to know more about the activity uh, in your part of the world. Um, you know, it's not a very big state, but I guess you get the surrounding area. What kind of uh, 
cryptoids and you know, Bigfoot in your state? Uh, what's going What's going on up there in your part of the world well, in terms of uh, Lockman and Nessie and all those things? Yeah. That we're cryptids. Oh, cryptozoology. <laughs> yes. Well. Uh-huh. Uh, for me, it's like I didn't know there was much. Uh, I didn't know. I mean, when I hear Bigfoot, it was always seemed to be in the South and the Midwest and up in California or Oregon. Um, and, you know, the Nessie is down up in Scotland. <laughs> um, yep. And Mothman is in New Jersey. So I didn't know if there was really. I, I hadn't heard of anything really in New England. But one of our presenters, uh, uh, Jamie, is it Shane or is it uh, – Alexander Petikoff, uh, or is it, or is it Mike? Alexander, Was, I think it's Al- Alexander Petikoff. You're thinking of? Is he going to do the one on local yeah. cryptozoology in New England? Yes. Yep. Alexander Petikoff. That's, yep. Oh, okay. And he's a filmmaker too. Um, Correct. So he's going to be doing a lecture right on that on New England cryptozoology and cryptids. So, um, so that's another way. People, I can learn because I didn't know. I don't know what's in New England. <laughs> I don't know what kind of cryptids <laughs> we have. So awesome. that's going to be a learning experience. I can't wait to hear it. And what about UFOs? UFOs. What kind of sightings do you have in your part of the world? And it could be like the whole, you know, surrounding states. Do you have a lot of activity there. Have you seen well, I one? Have, I haven't. I believe Jamie has. More than one, really, right, Jamie? Yes, I have. I have, and there's um, there's definitely there's definitely history of sightings within the area. Even in Rhode Island, there's an old uh, there's an old photo that's pretty popular. I forget what year it was from, maybe in the late '60s, that was taken in uh, with Cranston, Rhode Island. But um, I've I've seen um, uh, craft both here in the New England and outside the New England area, which um, were fascinating to me. And um, yeah, there, there's a website. I forget the name of it that lists. Uh, sightings throughout the country, and every now and again, certainly there's, um, you know, reports uh, in the in the New England area, Rhode Island, Connecticut has a pretty active MUFON group too that that um, lists a bunch of sightings within the Connecticut area as well. So, definitely a lot of activity in this part of the world. So it's uh, it's, it's pretty fascinating. I know in upstate uh, Massachusetts, like Western northwestern Massachusetts has had a lot of sightings and I believe northern New Hampshire has yeah, had yeah. A, a special there's a special stri- strips or special roads yeah. that you can go down to that, that are um mm. that are known to have a high UFO yeah, there's, um there's, incident. There's, yeah, you're yeah. right. Uh, that was Betty and Barney Hill obviously was New Hampshire. That's a pretty famous case Whoa. obviously in May, in, right. in yeah. Maine. Yeah. Yeah, in Maine was the Allagash abductions. Where I've met um, mm-hmm. uh, Char- uh, Charlie. He was he's awesome. Uh, you have seen him speak. But the Allagash abductions are pretty famous as well. So certainly Maine, New Hampshire, a lot of famous um, sightings there as well. Is MUFON Rhode Island helping you? It's your UFO network. Um, They're on Facebook. You need to hit yeah, on them the, real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, they haven't helped with the I, I so reached much out. Yeah, I reach out to them, but I haven't gotten much response from them but you know mm-hmm. well that's okay find a chapter but you know yeah. ken pfeiffer yeah. is the state director of rhode island okay yeah or was yeah. i don't know janet janet knows more about the directors she's working with one this week i don't know about the directors oh you don't I mean, you used no, to. I don't all right, well no. Let, let no, I never years, <laughs> we're not up on the all the directors okay but you had some lady come on but we'll ask and make sure rhode island folks rhode island and yeah. ufos mm-hmm. cotton Rhode Island, and uh, you know we do a lot of UFO stuff. So, uh, so we're going to do cryptozoology, alienology, phenomenology with X Files Filers Unlimited, and you're going to hear a lot more. Now, uh, this is Valerie, and she out of lo and behold, we believe she has been uh, got an epiphany, of <laughs> an inspiration. You, did you really, you know, just really quick. Tell us how, why you wanted to do this, because this is a huge undertaking. we got almost 15 minutes left, so huge undertaking okay. to just say, I'm going to put on this conference, and it's going to be <laughs> maybe, you know, every day, I don't know, three days out of the year. This is huge. Yeah. Valerie, we really respect you. you got to understand, this is me oh. and Janet's life for 12 years, okay? 
You got to get this. <laughs> this is what 